Hey everybody, welcome to the Other Hours Podcast. It is so good to see you. My name's Ryan Romeo, and I'm of course here with David Stockton. Hello. And uh, today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, a subject that I think is really, really important in all of our lives, and that's generosity, that's giving, uh, the heart of generosity that we have as followers of Jesus. Um, and when we were talking before we start, before we started, uh, David is talking about that kind of these three different ideas of giving, and we're just going to kind of unpack those a little bit, talk about them, tell some stories. Um, but David, you want to kick us off into that first thing the well, yeah, that we were I talking mean, I about? Lay them out. So basically, in in all of my time, kind of wrestling with the Bible and wrestling with my own um, financial world, which has not been super impressive by any means. <laughs> Um, but just really trying to figure out what's what's the heart of the Lord as we navigate finances. And uh, there's really three things that have seemed to come out real clearly in the library of scripture um, that I've tried to put into practice into my life and, and even, you know, encourage with my kids and my family and, and, and even as the organization of the church to do as well. But um, the first is the faithful tithe. I mean, I think definitely it's very, very clear in the in the Torah in the beginning, there's the faithful tithe. Um, there's a consistency to it. There's even kind of like a um, practice of it where it's not a lot of like, you know, should I or shouldn't I or how should I? It's just done. This mm -hmm. is the Lord's money. And we put it that way. Um, and secondly, you have the generous gift where this is just a heart of generosity, you know, give cheerfully to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, some, somewhere there's a connection between those two as you look at the New Testament. Um, there's definitely acknowledgement of the tithe, even though there's not a lot of teaching about the tithe. Um, but there's also just even more intense on, on the giving side and the generosity and, and, and all of that. But then you also see throughout the entirety of the scriptures, this idea of the sacrificial offering, mm -hmm. not fun to talk about, but um, generosity would be giving out of, you know, what you have or what, what's extra, whereas the sacrificial offering would be giving out of what you, you don't have or, or giving out of your need, kind of like the, mm -hmm. the widow with the might. Yeah. Um, and so I think all three of those things are things that that the Bible is prescribing to us to make sure greed doesn't win the day, yeah. um, to make sure that you know people are cared for, um, and to keep us from being self-centered, and to honor God in that way. And so I think all three of those things should show up in the life of a believer um, mm -hmm. over time. And I think the the generous or the the faithful tithe is something that needs to be there yeah. weekly, monthly, yeah. yearly, daily, however you get um, paid. <laughs> and uh, I think the generous gift should be very frequent as well and yeah. large or small. But then the sacrificial offering, yeah, I mean, I think there, there are moments where God really calls us to that, but I don't see that quite on the frequency as, as the other two. Yeah. Um, but still, there should be at least one time in your life you sell out for Jesus. And I mean, literally sell out yeah. probably. Yeah. And if you haven't, Maybe it's time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take these in a row. So yeah. the the faithful tithe, uh, we were just talking, you know, yeah. Blake and I, we have it auto withdrawal because it's yeah. easy these days, you know, yeah. and it's awesome. Like you never forget it. You know, it's auto withdrawing. Um, and I always had a little bit of a, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I should feel that, you know, and you and I were talking about it a little bit. Yeah. What do you think about that when people are in that sort of like automatically giving sort of thing? Yeah, so I think the faithful tithe. I mean, the idea is that this money is the Lord's, yeah. and and we we should we should not touch it as much as possible. Mm. Um, and I think you know the you're not knowing what your left hand do is and and doing from your right hand in that regard. So I mean, one thing that that we were mentioning, and this seems a little self serving, but <laughs> I, I thought this before I was working at a church, and um, yeah. and my my income came from that. But it's it's the idea that. Um, Nowadays, there's so many options of where you can you can tithe, you know, like with yeah. all the nonprofits, with the Internet, all those things. But um, I really think that the local church is where the tithe is supposed to be. Mm. And, and what I mean by that is because as soon as you start to direct the tithe, it, it, it is less the Lord's only and it's now a little more yours. Yeah. Um, and so I do think that there, that whatever community of faith you're a part of, I think God is calling us throughout the scriptures to, to faithfully sow into the kingdom that we're a part of building there on earth, the kingdom of heaven. 
Um, and so I think the more the more we start to direct it or say, I'm going to put a little bit of it there, a little bit of it there, a little bit of it there. I just think we get our hands on it too much. And so yeah. we should do that. And then we can give on top of that. That's where sure. the generous gift would come in. Yeah. But then on that same thing with <laughs> the left hand and the right hand, not knowing what's going on and getting our hands off of it, I used to want to like kind of downplay or even you know make fun of the people who are um, – you know, reoccurring givers yeah, as far as the pay. tithe, yeah. auto pay. <laughs> Just going like, man, I want to be a part of it. I want to, I want to feel what it feels like to do that and present that to the Lord. And I, and yeah. I still, I think that still is, is valid. Um, however, I can't make fun of them because really the most true not touching it, not even knowing what the left hand is when it just happens without you knowing. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just clearly this is the Lord's. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to see. It. I want to get it in the Lord's hands as fast as possible because it's his. Um, so I actually think that's very valid. And, yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, you got to watch out for the the credit card fees, too, which is a whole <laughs> nother dynamic. Fun well, and it's that first fruits to the Lord. It's mm -hmm. the very like scraping it right off the yep. top, you know, yep. and I think that that's so important. Yep. First and we've talked, first. Blake and I have talked a lot about it because um, we've heard that philosophy of, you know, like bring into the storehouses, the yep. full tithe, this sort of idea of tithing to your church. Um, but I've never heard it put that way, which I think is so good. It's like you're you're entrusting the kingdom you're entrusting other people that are working for the kingdom yep. and just saying hey this is this is my this is my home this is my storehouse and my first tithe goes right off the top to them you know yeah. so and biblically you know obviously it's there and uh, i mean mm -hmm. the tithe is a tenth so it's yeah. it's the tenth idea that's that's been throughout scripture i know like ben carson was trying to say well, that's what our taxes should be is a tithe <laughs> to the government because it nice works idea. for god it's work for the government <laughs> um but so i mean i i think i i mean we're not under the law in the new testament i understand all that i've heard mm -hmm. those teachings but again jesus continually affirmed the the goodness of the law sure and as a practice that could lead us you know kind of towards the way of of god and uh and so i, I still am a really strong proponent for the tithe in my own mm -hmm. life i mean i've been tithing you know when i was making four hundred dollars a month yeah. i tithed when i was making a thousand dollars a month i was making a tithe yeah you know and i just it's just been a practice that it's i feel like it's kept my you know me in check as far as greed but mm -hmm. um and and I I mean I I feel like the Lord has just really provided and yeah. and I'm I'm so thankful for that and the little bits add up over time and when you think mm -hmm. about you know investing in your retirement or investing your future here on Earth yeah you know it's a good practice to put ten percent away towards the last years of your life or that mm -hmm. chunk and and yet we know from the words of Christ this life it means nothing we yeah. are not supposed to value this at all in yeah. comparison with the next life yeah. and so if we're putting 10 percent away towards retirement or whatever um then we should be putting at least 10 percent away you know for the next life and what all of that's going on and jesus yeah. makes direct connections with that on the sermon on the mount yeah yeah well and in the new testament paradigm a lot of like when you see in acts they're giving everything. There's that, and it's kind of a good segue into the generous yeah. gift. You know, yeah. there's that that moment where they're selling land, they're doing everything, they're, they had all things in common, yeah. and they're coming to the table with whatever they have in excess, sometimes not even what they have in yeah. excess. But we could take it from there first, that generous gift. Yeah. In the New Testament, it really is, the, the bar is even higher than I would say when, when you know, yeah. you're looking at the tithe, you know. So that generous gift, what does that yeah. look like? Well, Barnabas was the one that, you know, in that first church, um, he was moved by God to sell his property and, and yeah. bring the proceeds and lay it before them. And, and that kind of kicked off some what what seemed like other people wanting to do that, including, you know, Ananias Ananias and Sapphira, who, <laughs> yeah. who didn't do it, honestly. Yeah. And it yeah. was a rough situation. Yeah. But I don't know Barnabas situation was Barnabas a really well well-off person and he had multiple properties he just sold one of them brought him mm -hmm. we don't we don't get to know all of that we just get to know that for that church when it was so small and had no future i mean mm -hmm. it was like what's this gonna be is this gonna go beyond us yeah i mean jesus isn't here are we gonna fail there's just so much uncertainty and then he dropped this gift hmm. on this community that was was out of heart of generosity and and yeah. a heart of you know we believe in this and we want to support this and we want to make sure and and they're, what they ended up doing was making sure there was no needs among anybody you know in the in the community yeah, yeah so they used it really well but I just think about that generous gift at that time hmm. was the seed 
that made it possible for this mm. thing called the church of, yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, not of Latter-day Saints, of, <laughs> of true saints. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you think about that property sold, given in that way mm. to that community has now like, what's the, what's the, the percentage of growth yeah. from that and all the properties that churches own around the world, yeah. all the church yeah. buildings that are built on those properties, yeah. all, all of the, you know, I mean, it's just, <laughs> that's probably the single greatest investment yes. that has ever been done. And that's, yeah. that's the power of the generous gift of mm -hmm. what it can do in a person's life. Yeah. You have stories of, I'm oh, sure of when sure. someone just drops them, it could have been $10. Oh yeah. Could have been a hundred dollars. And it yeah. just was like, a, a catalyst of some way mm -hmm. for something so great. And yeah. um, another story on that regard, just a little closer to home. Um, my my parents were a big part of Living Streams getting kicked off. Um, my dad yeah. was was a doctor and good friends with Mark Buckley, and mm -hmm. so they decided you know they that you know the Buckleys wanted to move here and, and start a church. We lived here, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you know. My dad was saying, "Hey, I, I'll help fund the church if you if you start it." Which there's on how it's in a living room. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's four people. It's like yeah. not a big deal. Um, but in that process, you know, my dad sewed into Living Streams, and at one point bought him a van. At one point, actually did buy them a house hmm. um, to use. That house was sold to buy another house. That house yeah. was then sold to buy a property over on 20th Street, which yeah. was which was sold and then bought this property. Yeah. And and you know the heartbreak of of my life. And I hope the, I mean, I'm sure the Lord has worked it all out with my mm -hmm. dad, but um, my dad didn't live to get to see mm -hmm. that his little investment in this podunk church that we didn't know if had any future and all, but he just yeah. was generously given into this thing mm -hmm. um, and supporting his friend and all of this in the ministry. I, I mean, it now supports me and my family, like, yeah. and, and takes care of us. And, it, you know, yeah. it's taking care of a lot of other people. And mm -hmm. so I get, I get to see and live out what God can do with a generous gift yeah. um, and how yeah. faithful he is to respond to that. So yeah. the generous gift's a big deal. It's oh, absolutely. Deal. And, and the Buckleys are just so awesome. At that's amazing. Gift. And yeah, that's the thing. Sometimes we discount, sometimes money doesn't feel real spiritual, mm -hmm. but when it's given in that sort of way, yeah. the, the, what well, you said, that investment, it just keeps going. Yeah. And it's one of those things that we know we're called to invest in the kingdom. Right. And even for me, even on a small level, the the prophetic side of gifting too that moment of like the holy spirit giving you a prompting mm -hmm. to give and we have so many stories especially when we were in ywam we would get like those random checks and you always hear the yeah. stories but like when you live it it's completely different but we would need money for a plane ticket or yeah. something mm -hmm. and we're you know we're getting 10 or twelve thousand dollars a year getting like nothing you know and we would get a check out of the blue for like $250 and it's exactly what we needed. Yep. And <clears throat> you just never know when the Holy Spirit is inviting you into that sort of yeah. excitement, you get to be a part of that too when you're giving and you hear the Lord say, hey, give 300 bucks to, to this person. Yep. And you do it, it's that act of faith and that generous gift can create such yep. an explosion of faith, such yep. a, a movement of the spirit and such a like an affirmation that yep. the Lord is with us. Yep. And I think that's the the thing that's so beautiful yep. about the generous gift. Yep. And and I, don't, and I don't think the generous gift begins until the tithe has been given. Yes. I mean, I, yeah. I, that's, that's part of the trick. I think the tithe is the Lord's. And then after that tithe is given, then it's a matter of now we're in generous gift territory where yeah. we're now giving something cheerfully, hopefully, yeah. um, you know, to, to help someone else out, to bless someone, to hmm. please the heart of God. And, and the Lord has a lot of promises of rewards, um, hmm. both in this life and in the next life yeah. to anyone that's willing to be generous. And it doesn't have to be money too. remember, like give yeah. a cup of cold water to a child in my name hmm. and great is your reward in heaven. Yes. And yeah. so like, well, if, what if you give them like, a cup of, of root beer or something, you <laughs> yeah. know? Like, what kind of reward are we talking yeah. about there? Or, you know, yeah. like, and that, that, that's true. It doesn't have to be fantastic. It doesn't have to be wild. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, big gifts can create big, big faith and big breakthrough. Yes, absolutely. Um, and little gifts can create that as well, which is cool. Yeah. Now, number three, which I think this is maybe less fun, but I honestly think it's the most fun side of giving if we let it be. That's the sacrificial giving. Mm -hmm. uh, that that gift that it's not out of the abundance you're talking about uh, when you get you know a, a check from the government or something like, oh, I didn't even yeah. need this, great. And you start praying about where you wanna put that, great, awesome. What about when giving hurts a little bit? Let's talk about that. 
You really want to? <laughs> I do. Um, I do. Yeah, the sacrificial offering. So I, I know um, Robert Morris, who's a pastor of Gateway Church, mm. um, wrote a book called Blessed Life. And uh, whatever you think of Robert Morris in the book um, is one thing. But but it, it's interesting because in there he brings out this concept of a time where he really felt like Lord, the Lord was asking him to to sell out. Mm. And that was even like empty the, the bank account, you know. Um, I can't remember what all he ended up selling, mm. but it was basically like getting rid of the cushion completely. Yeah. Getting rid of all of the sense of security in bank accounts in whatever. And, and then even like giving up his car, you mm. know, and giving up these things. And, and it was just like, it, and, and it was this moment in his life where he just felt the Lord was calling him to sacrifice mm. in the area of resources. And, uh, and then what was cool in the book is then he's able to go one by one into each of the things, whether I can't remember if it was a house and a car and the savings account and all of these things or whatever, mm. but he ended up giving everything. But then he was able to say, now it's been 20 years. And let me tell you, let me tell you what, what's going on with my bank account. Mm. You know? Let me tell you what's going on with my car situation. Let me yeah. tell you what's going on with our house situation. Mm. And, and it wasn't just like, now I'm a bala. You know, like yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. He, was yeah. he was saying, he was saying, I gave that car away and it was just a matter of two years to where someone gave me a car that was actually a lot nicer than the car I had. Yeah. And then I ended up giving that. I think he'd given away like three cars or something. But each time it was like, boom, boom, boom. And now, you yeah. know, now he's driving an airplane. No, he wasn't. <laughs> I, I don't remember what the story something was. Something fancy, but, yes. But, it, but it, was a, it was a tangible, real life, current example mm. of, of, of sacrificial, of, of selling out. And so Jesus, you know, his example was, here, look at this widow. Like, here's these people giving these big amounts of money. Yeah out of their excess, you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't costing them anything yet. He would told his disciples, hold on, freeze. Don't look at anything else, but focus in on this lady right here mm -hmm. who's giving out of her poverty. Mm -hmm. She's giving out of her pain. She's giving out of um, her, you know, she's, she could be afraid, but instead she's faithfully giving. Mm -hmm. She could be, you know, angry at the Lord, but instead she's trusting in the Lord. It's like, she's just sowing into this and there was pain in that offering. I mean, mm -hmm. there was true pain in the offering. And yet, you know, in Jesus was basically saying like, all of the universe needs to just hush and focus in on this because yeah. this is the most beautiful thing to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you see that in times in the Bible, there's moments where God is saying, I I'm requiring everything right now. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thankful for the tithe, I'm thankful for the generous gifts, but right now, I, I I want you to give in a way that's not safe, hmm. and and I and I think that that shows up in the life of the believer. And I mean, yeah. for Brittany and I, I mean, we we sold out and went to live in a village at one point, and hmm. um, and that was that was extremely meaningful to be um, kind of floating. And really, it was yeah. like, okay, Lord, you're our backup plan right now. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, and and the Lord sustained us and, and carried us through. I know mm. um, my brother Peter. You know, he's <laughs> sold out. I mean, he's a doctor. He's making some some zeros. Yeah. And uh, and yet felt called to go to Honduras, and he and his wife. And I, I'm just so proud of them for selling out. You know. Yeah. And going down, giving there things away. I mean, I remember when they were leaving. They're just like, hey, you want this car? You want? Yeah. Like they just wanted to be able yeah. to go. Um, and 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 kind of be empty and and you mm. think about the story when when Jesus was talking to the rich young ruler and yeah I mean I yeah. think all of us as Americans really need to say it's who we are I mean yeah yeah in a lot of ways and uh, and yet Jesus said to him I'm glad you're doing all of these works of the law I'm glad you've got your life together I'm glad you're honoring God with all of these things but there's one thing you lack mm. and right now I'm requiring you to sell everything you have give it to the poor and follow me. Yeah. And in that that was the moment where God was saying, Okay, I need you to do a sacrificial offering. Yeah. And he walked away sad. And Jesus did too. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? Yeah. And uh and I just I know that those moments are gonna come in our lives, in in, mm -hmm. in your life where God's saying, Hey, I wanna see if if you love me more than these. Yeah. And uh yeah. and ask us to do that sacrificial offering and Mm. And that is, I, and I don't talk about, and the reason I'm talking about it without jokes is because it's a very serious, holy moment, and and there's yeah. a lot of pain pain involved in that. Yeah. Um. And I would never want to pressure or coerce someone 
into saying, hey, I think it's time for your sacrificial giving. I, totally. I mean, that's for the that's Lord. between yeah. you and the Lord. But yeah. I do think it's in Scripture and it's do, and it's something that should show up in the life of a believer at some point hmm. or at least a few points, maybe. Yeah. Now, it's interesting because one of the one of the only things that God says in the Old Testament, put me to the test is in the, the area of finances, like when you give. I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. And I love the story of Robert Morrison, Morrison, Morris, Morris, Morris yeah. yeah. Giving things away, getting even better things back. Yeah. Where do we draw the line though, when it comes to like a prosperity thing of like, Hey, I'm giving so that I get something better. Yeah. What is the line there? Where do you, where do you see that becoming something unhealthy when you expect the Lord to, to come through better than what you gave? When you stop giving. Hmm. Okay. I think that's when you know something went wrong. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think there is a prosperity gospel that's, that's you know, evil and, and mm -hmm. um, causes a lot of damage. But at the same time, God is a rewarder mm -hmm. of, for those who diligently seek him. I mean, sure. it's, it, without faith, it's impossible to please him. We must believe that he is mm -hmm. and that he is a rewarder. Like God yes. wants us to see himself as a rewarder, yeah. yeah, as a father that loves to give good gifts to his children. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of prosperity in the gospel. Now, yeah. you have to let the Lord decide, is that prosperity next life? Mm -hmm. Is that prosperity this life? Is that prosperity what you want or is that prosperity what he knows you need hmm. so i mean that's where that's where it becomes tricky but it, i i just think as long as you're giving you're, hmm. you're probably not um falling into this trap yeah um, but yeah. as soon as you start to give because with strings attached mm. then it's not a generous gift yeah it's yeah. it's a it's a giving with strings attached so yeah i think i think that's where it becomes a problem when all of a sudden you're starting to get frustrated with god because he's not coming through like you wanted mm -hmm. or people aren't coming through like you wanted or you're not getting the life you wanted so that you stop giving mm. that's where the prosperity gospel is has taken root in your life yeah but as long yeah. as you're still giving yeah i don't have people saying i'm giving and i'm hoping for rewards sure yeah. And, but again, you just can't, you, you don't get to decide the reward. Yeah. When you yeah. decide the reward, you're in trouble. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, hmm. but God, he, he gives people stuff. Yeah. He loves yeah. it. He totally loves it. And it's a heart posture thing too, right? Yeah. You know, it's like the, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. Like mm -hmm. that heart posture yeah. of even the strings attached, like you said, like I'm going to give this big gift and man, I can't wait till yeah. I get a bigger gift yeah. back. That's a little bit different. It's like if the heart is for the for the gift yep. and the return more than it is yep. for for the giving, then there's yep. probably something a little out of whack. You yeah, know? and I think that recognition. So like yeah. like you you you're wanting the Lord to reward you in the specific way that you want Him to reward you. Yeah, that's that's prosperity gospel nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is you're wanting recognition for your gift. Hmm. That's prosperity gospel because you, you want yeah. recognition because so that you can get the reward that you want to get yeah but i think those are things that you know i don't see in the scriptures people wanting recognition yeah i don't think it's wrong to get recognized if you do something awesome to get thanks and, mm -hmm. and all that we know about barnabas's gift right yeah like we yeah, know yeah. he did that so it's not a bad thing yeah at all mm -hmm. but i don't think Barnabas was giving it so that forever in the annals of the libraries of scripture, he would be known and declared. Yeah. yeah. He was just going because he was motivated by the spirit of God and mm. he had a generous heart and mm. he really wanted to support this thing that God was doing. Yeah. And, uh, and realized how important finances were. Yeah. And so he was able to drop that in and yeah. Whew, it's yeah. Awesome. Well, and I think that generosity too, is this kind of pushback against even the, the, propensity of the heart to idolize mm -hmm. the comfort of money and everything yeah. else. And every time the Lord asks me to give, even if it's out of a place of abundance, I always feel in me this part of like, like this little bit of defiance of going, yeah. I'm not going to be held back by this thing that is so sneaky and can grab a hold of you so easily. Yeah. And every time you're operating in that, that gift, you're pushing back on that idolatry just a little bit, you know, and keeping back from that love of yeah. money, keeping yeah. back, you know, keeping your heart back from that love of money. Totally. Yeah. And and that's I, what, what I love about Living Streams history is, I mean, I've been able to be here 20 years now and even, you know, a little bit of growing up before then and, and just watch the faithfulness of Living Streams to say, we want to mirror 
what we feel like the scripture is teaching for an individual's life. So 10% of everything that's come in here has gone straight into missions. That's the tithe. We don't touch it. It doesn't go to organizational, yeah. you know, costs at all. It just goes straight out the door into sowing into the kingdom. Mm. And I think that's just been so cool. And, and then even the people that give here, I mean, there's people that give them some big gifts. We, I mean, the, the two biggest ones that I can think of in the last 20 years was um, we had someone give us um, um, $800,000. Yeah. And that was a tithe <laughs> off of a deal they made. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wait a second. So that's 10%. Yeah. yeah. Where are we going now? <laughs> um, but they didn't want any recognition. Hmm. They didn't demand any like, hey, and we, you know, we want a little bit of this. And mm. we would like a little bit of this. Yeah. Can you get a little better pew cut? Like yeah. they were saying, we, we've never been in this situation before, but we know that the, this honors the Lord and we we want to give this. And we're so excited about what's that. going to happen with it. And that. and I've been able to give them updates and say, mm. well, just so you know, this did this and this did this and this. And they're like, yeah. oh, that's fun. But it, there's still, there's just no attachment to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we had another person that gave us a $400,000 gift, which is massive. Mm -hmm. And he was someone that didn't go to our church, but he was someone that um, knew about our church because his because you know the church had done a really good job of caring for his aging um, aging parents hmm. and and he had now come into this inheritance and all this stuff and he really was just saying I just feel like I want to you know give you guys this gift mm -hmm. because of how well you took care of my parents yeah. and we were just like whoa this is amazing so it was just yeah. a generous gift faithful tithe I mean that that's like all these things coming in yeah. um, and and yet you know those aren't any more significant in the kingdom of heaven that someone who's given the you know 25 bucks a month yeah um and and yeah i just i'm so proud of the giving the way it's been done at living streams um mm -hmm. both in practice as an organization and the people the way that their attitude has been towards it yeah and yeah. Um, and yet i'm excited about what's next i mean we got yeah. work to do and yeah. we got plans and um, yeah. we got vision and and uh and mm -hmm. so we're sowing into what's next and and we all need to really i think take seriously that the finances that we have um can can help and support and further mm -hmm. what the lord is doing or you know it can build our own kingdom and yeah. it's gonna waste away and be worthless and be so embarrassed in the next life for all the dimes <laughs> we spent on ourselves yeah um yeah. and so we need to keep that in mind that's really good that's really good i'm i'm sure we're gonna have to do this again because i think it's just such a big subject yeah. uh, but thank you guys so much for joining us on today's podcast Make sure and jump on livingstreams.org if you want to reach out to us and contact us. Um, but we're going to keep doing the Other Hours podcast. Keep, a, uh, keep an eye out on YouTube or anywhere else where you enjoy this. Have a great day. God bless you. This has been a production of Living Streams Church in Phoenix, Arizona. If you like what you heard, please visit us at livingstreams.org and follow us on Facebook and Instagram.